The Black Ice Chronicles Massive. It's November 22nd, 55 degrees in the morning in Las Vegas. You know, it's the strangest phenomenon out of Las Vegas. When it gets cooler because there's very little snow, you'll see snow on the mountains, but most of the people who are here are under the illusion, I guess, that it's still warm. Because you'll see people walking around in shorts, short sleeves, flip-flops. It's 41 to 55 degrees. And they're saying, hey, it's still warm outside. But that is not true. That's why you also see people hacking and coughing and hacking and coughing, coughing up lungs, everything else, and having to go to urgent care. So that's just the observation since we've been out here. Being that we come from the Midwest and uh, Lake Erie, Cleveland, Ohio, we realize coming out in the morning that 55 degrees is 55 degrees everywhere. It's, it all depends on if you have uh, a lake or an ocean that the temperature, that the breeze will make it feel a little chilly or wind chill. That's what we see. But other than that, 55 degrees is 55 degrees. So you bundle the fuck up. 41 degrees, 40 degrees is 40 degrees. You bundle up. But not necessarily out here for these people. But so let, let's bookmark that right there. That's not what I'm going to speak on today. Let's talk about, uh, do you realize that the third episode of the Black Ice Chronicles Season 6 is coming up this Monday? That's right. This Monday, the third episode. That means that th two episodes are already running. That's... Uh, Meet Mama Banks, Episode 2, and of course, Episode 1, Track. Track is interesting because I came up with it as me and my wife uh, would get up in the morning and exercise at the track. And I said, well, let me tell stories about the track. And so that's how I came up with that, you know. And then, you know, my ability to write. So go watch Track. And then most definitely go watch Mama Banks because that is in memory of Marilyn Wyman who passed in 2015, December 9th. So, you know, at the Black Ice Chronicles, we always strive to make sure that people are seen, heard, recognized, and appreciated while they are here. And we make sure that people who participate in the Black Ice Chronicles are honored when they pass on. We are the only production that actually does that because we are for the people. We are for the actors. So let's bookmark that right there. O'Bannon! That's what I want to speak on today. O'Bannon, there's no greater president than O'Bannon. Let's say that President Obama wasn't named President Obama, but he was named O'Bannon. And he was Irish American and not African American. O'Bannon, right? And his wife is named Margaret, and one of his daughters is named Nicole, and the other daughter named Sarah. O'Bannon, the first family O'Bannon. Let's say that it, Obama was not African American Obama, but was Irish American O'Bannon, even though the Republicans would have obstructed him. They would say at the end, O'Bannon, 
no greater president than Obama. That's what they will say. And Trump will go sit with Obama and he'll be saying, Obama, my Irish eyes are singing. My Irish eyes. That's what he would be saying. Even though he's German and Scottish, he would be telling Obama, excuse me, Obama, that he was the greatest president ever. Even through obstruction, he got so much done. It, it was excellent. And though he beat out Hillary, he would, he still would honor Obama. And then on inaugural day, when when they walk down the steps and they see the former president off into Air Force One, Trump will be crying. <laughs> to rolla, 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 that's an Irish lullaby. That's what will be happening. Because he will be Obama, the greatest president, Obama. Now, for people who don't know American history, his story, you would think that Hollywood, they always put up the Catholic priest and they always made films. You would see, you would see Bing Crosby. You would see Bing Crosby and he would sing to a that's an Irish lullaby. And you would think that America just loved the Catholics. And that's not true. Uh, when the Irish got off the boat during the potato famine that was going on in Ireland at the time that's why they called some people black Irish and actually if you go back in history further you'll find out that some more but, but that's another story we're gonna stay on point here but when they got the Irish off the boat they automatically signed them up and said that you going into the Civil War so the Civil War was going on at the same time as the potato famine and so when they automatically got off the boat the males they were automatically signed up and they joined the Union Army and they went off to fight and they said that if you survived and you become American um, an American citizen and then later they wrote legislation so they would be considered white okay so for them to be sitting up there saying to -ra 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 -ra, unfortunately Obama is African American Obama. That no good uppity nick. I mean, Muslim. And look at his wife, Michelle, and those two kids. Who do they think they are? Yeah, see, we don't have the luxury of being legislated into being uh, considered white. And, you know, we don't have our Congressional Black Caucus to make sure that the Three-Fifths Amendment is eradicated from out of the shit altogether. Right? So we don't have that. So, it would be Obama, the greatest president, Obama. But it's not. It's Obama. And have you noticed that Obama has decided that he's going to forego his vacation for six months while he writes a memoir about his years in the presidency. He's going to bypass that to sit in and try to help Trump. Let me bring this down. Let me bring this down because the sun is coming up. There we go. There's good color. So, He's going to forego his vacation to stick around because he's already sticking around in Washington to make sure that his last daughter gets through school. Here's an open letter to President Obama. 63 to 67% of the people, or let me title it first, why Obama should just leave and say, you're on your own, buddy. Why you should say that? Here it is, 63 to 67% of the population voted for Trump. 
they believed his message, his alt-right message that he was putting down, make America great again, 1950s. Matter of fact, have you guys been watching the news and seen the report about the alt-right having a, a summit over last weekend? And when the guy finished, he went, hell Trump. And then when they pulled out to the wide shot, people were doing the Hitler, how Hitler shit. Obama. Open letter. You should say, you should come up with some way and say, well, you know what? I'm going to let them go on their own and do their thing. However you set it up, you know, you're so smooth with the words. You're smooth. You need to get smooth with this and move on because you know what's going to happen? You are going to tarnish your legacy trying to mess with Trump. I want to tell you, you're going to tarnish your legacy because what's going to happen is they're going to do that arrogant bigot racist shit to you what they say oh okay sounds good thanks for that and then they're going to escort you out and act like you never existed if you think that by doing this somehow your legacy is going to be maintained white folks who are who live under the white code who are alt right do not believe in anyone who is not white first but then blonde hair blue eye having any history that's worth being kept they want to keep up the lie that they the, they're the only ones who built anything wrote anything contributed anything to any society these are the same people who blew the noses off the sphinx all around Egypt chiseled off the little statuettes to make sure that the nose was not there so the people would not realize that black people built one of the greatest civilizations these are the same people who went in and destroyed Timbuktu took what they understood and destroyed the rest changed the number system from 0 to 9 to 1 to 10 and intervals of 10 these are the people who did this and do you think that you by you helping them they're somehow going to uh, say oh well yes we're going to keep his like no you know say thank you nigger I mean I mean Muslim and be on your way you see that 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 whole thing Muslim Muslim and thug are the new words for nigger. I don't know how they took thug when Tupac had thug and he was thugging for a purpose and I don't know how they took that and flipped that on us. We were asleep for a while. I think and they took that and ran with it and flipped it. When really the real thugs were those who destroyed civilizations and then took credit for knowing everything and really they didn't know anything so they believe right now that the people who they are putting in place will do better than people who have studied economics who have studied world affairs who have been in government they think they can do better because they're white and they're right that's what we are seeing have you been watching the news maybe you didn't believe me but now you believe me now and now there is no more cooning and no more trying to be the good Negro for it. So, in closing, Obama, you were their fear. And they're going to wipe your legacy away if you help or not. So you should find a way out because they will somehow blame you and you're not even president. Plus, you don't want to be walking in the back of the White House in the back of the White House to uh, so that the media won't know that you're there. You're walking in the back and the same servants that were so proud
to serve the first black president, see you come in and act like Toby. You have to let the Toby syndrome go. This is my opinion. I believe that Obama being raised by white grandparents always wanted to prove to his grandfather that he was worthy. And probably his grandfather said, oh, that's good, you got your bachelor's. He went and got his master's. He went and got his PhD. And then, oh, that's good. That's good, that's good. You, you see this hammer? You can't pick it up, like, like, like the commercial. That's what I'm saying, so he has to get over, like, did you see him at the sound? You have to go back and watch video now to understand what I'm talking about. It's a psychosis. It's a psychosis and I discussed that psychosis in Meet Mama Banks. I discussed that the psychosis is the psychosis between those two people. The black person and the white person. The white person that raised the black person and the black person that was raised by the white person. It's a psychosis. And so watch meet Mama Banks and you see the Crazy D character in the middle of all this shit and he's observing this shit. I wrote this, I wrote that back in 2013, but it is so apropos to what's happening today. It is exactly what's happening. But Obama has to get over that psychosis. Did you see him, my point, did you see him at the uh, Selma? the bridge the uh, Edmund Pettus bridge the celebration where they walked across he was sitting there and uh, George Bush his wife was to his to his right side we're looking at it from the front view but it, it was his right side and then Barbara Bush was sitting next to Obama and then there was First Lady Michelle and Obama was talking to uh old lady bush uh herbert walker bush's uh wife as if she was an aunt or something and they're at the salma celebration uh honor or whatever you want to call it because it's not really a celebration getting your head beat all in whatever memorial whatever the shit they want to call that shit but they walked across the bridge, family and anything. So Michelle is sitting up there and she's sitting there and he's so engrossed in this conversation as if this is his grandmother or his aunt or something. And Michelle has to touch his arm to bring him back to where are you right now? What, what are you? And then when you watch other footage, you see that happening again. It's a psychosis. You know, he's a good guy, but it's just that little bit. So the next one that gets in, we have to make sure that his background is one of being definitely in the struggle and all of his relatives, all of that have to be black. That's the truth. We're going to get a next one. Because right now we're getting ready to go through backlash. Oh, yeah, by the way, I've ended my letter to Obama. I'm just giving you observations now. <sighs> we're in a backlash right now. It's a white lash. Like, like the white, the liberal whites will deny that it's a white lash. Because, you know, white folks stick together no matter what. The only differences that they have is differences of opinion and politic. But other than that, they stay on the white coat. That's the truth. So, we're in a white lash right now. We've seen white lash before. 1865. Seven years, 1865, the last slaves were freed in Galveston, Texas. They didn't get the memo because the Emancipation Proclamation came out in 1863. But somehow in Texas, Texas people didn't let their slaves get the message, so the last slaves were, were released in 1865, and that's where Juneteenth, in June, Juneteenth celebration comes from. Why well, everyone should definitely celebrate that, right? So we've seen backlash. So within 
those years, all of a sudden there were congressmen, black congressmen and senators. You have to go and read the history and know what's happening. But then the Democrats and the Republicans struck a deal in the back room. They were smoking cigars and drinking whiskey. That's how they used to discuss shit. Good old boy shit. Now at the time, the Democrats were the Dixiecrats who have the role of the Republicans today. So, we were free and we were making advancements. People started opening up businesses uh, using the, the skills that they had coming from Africa because they had built civilizations. Then the whites utilized their ability to build and then afterwards they had become masters at free labor but now they wanted to get paid for their labor so they opened up businesses scholars uh, scholarships schools people were learning boom 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 we had representation in congress seven years passed they strike the deal they strip all of the people from out of the uh, senate in the house gone wiped thinking they would wipe them from history then started what is called the shameful period of a hundred years because it started to rev up in 1865 but it didn't uh didn't get come to a head to where we had finally got to a point where we could get legislation passed to protect us finally to had teeth in 1965 so it was a hundred years so we are a hundred years behind purposely at the hands of white folks. That was a backlash. It's called the Nadir. Look that up. Jim Crow. Hanging. All that. Alright. So that was a backlash. Then you have the backlash that happened in between 1965 up until today where they're trying to uh, reverse laws, always trying to reverse laws, always fighting the civil rights laws and saying you don't need it because all of this society should be one people. It's only one problem. The same people who are saying that are the same people who believe in an all-white nation. Go figure. So now President Obama was their fear and they called him all kinds of names other than what they wanted to call him, but they had code names to replace the main name that he, they wanted to call him. And now we see, after eight years of President Obama, the backlash. This is not, this is not anything new. The difference, the only difference is with this social media and with the visibility of cameras where there were no cameras before, will it be another hundred years? Will laws be reversed? Will laws be eradicated? Will the gains of black people who led, which led to the gains of minorities, because black people are a majority around the world, Will the advancements of black people be set back and reversed, thus reversing all the fate of the minorities who came here, who got, who were able to profit off of civil rights, the Latinos, etc., etc., etc. Will that be reversed? Will we be in a hundred, another hundred years, or will we read history, understand history, his story, and then defeat it? before it comes to pass and we're in the second nadir because it appears to me if we're not aware and awake and vigilant we're at the beginning of the second nadir so that's what I want to talk about today O'Bannon if his name was O'Bannon and do the research, put it all together, get it in your mind, 
and then make the decision on what you're going to do. Stay tuned. The Black Ice Chronicles.